Welcome to this lecture. Here we are going to discuss error handling in Django. Now what is error handling? Error handling in Django involves managing and responding to errors that may occur during the processing of a web request. So whenever you are going to any URL, some problems might occur. Maybe you are going to an invalid URL or you are giving some invalid input into the query string. So it might cause some problems. So we need to handle those errors. Django provides several mechanisms to handle the errors ranging from generic error pages to custom error views. So there are basically two ways to handle the errors in Django. One is the debug mode and second one is the custom error views. So first of all, we will talk about debug mode. During the development, Django's settings usually have debug that is uh, it's, it's set to true already. In this mode, if an error occurs, Django displays a detailed error page with some technical details. Stack traces means that some technical details will be provided and other debugging information to help the developers identify and fix the issues quickly. All right, this would be much better for the developers. But the point is when it's the end user, the end user might not want to have all those technical details because that would be useless for the end user. Means that we can hide it. Right. So let's implement this debug mode now. You open the settings.py of your project. Settings.py is always present in the project only. So now we are going to resolve this thing at the project level. Right. So it is already set to true. Now. When it is set to true, it means that whenever you are going to any invalid URL, that time it will show you page not found. But there are some other details which are meant only for the developer. So you can say that it's useless for the end user. So we can resolve it by hiding them by going to the settings.py and making this as false. So once you make it false, you need to specify that for which hosts do you want this to work. You can specify an asterisk symbol. Asterisk means that you want this to work for each and every host. Right. Let's check for the errors. You need to execute this again. Python dot Python manage dot py run server. Right. Now you again go to any invalid URL. Let's say I'll be putting a slash and I'll be writing my name instead because I know this is an invalid URL. It's not there in my URLs file. So now you see that it's saying not found. The requested resource was not found on this server. At the same time, you can also go to inspect element and check the status code. So the status codes, as you see here, check the network, check inside the network. Just reload the page and now this time you see status code is 404. 404 status code is for invalid URL. There might be other status codes as well like 403, you have 503 and 500. But in this we are going to implement only 404 for simplicity. Right. So this is just a piece of information that the page was not found. This is by default in Django. And this not found, the requested resource was not found on the server. This is also a message which is by default coming from the Django without showing any uh, technical details. Now this message will work for each and every invalid URL. Doesn't matter how many applications you're having, for which particular application you're using that URL, it will work at the project level. So project is always at the highest hierarchy, right? But is there a possibility that we can customize this message in some way also by having the same status code that is 404? Let's say we might want to print some message, dear user, the page does not exist. And that too may be in red font color. So is that possible? Yes, it is. For this, we need to do some customization. So that's why we have now custom error views. You can define custom error views in your Django application by creating functions that handle specific HTTP error status codes. Right. 
So this can be handled both at the project level and at the application level. But right now let's work upon the project level. Then later on we will come at the application level. Let's implement this now. For working with the customized error messages at the project level, you need to create a new file inside my project. Name it as views.py. Now here in this, we need to write down the default code that is from Django dot HTTP module. We need to import HTTP response class. Now we can specify our function. So inside this, we have handler 404. What is 404? It's a status code for not found URLs. And handler 404 is, is a special function or code that will handle the not found URLs. Right. Now inside this, we need to pass two mandatory parameters, request and exception. And now we can specify what error message do we want to display. So you can return an HTTP response. Let's have a message as we want to have a heading. And now inside this heading, we will specify dear user the page you are looking for does not exist right let's check for errors so no errors right now but after this you also need to specify the handler 404 inside the URLs file of your project. So come to the URLs.py of your project and here you have to specify the variable handler 404 equals to specify that this is from which project name you have to write the name of the project my project dot views dot and then the name of your handler it's the handler 404 right so let's check the output on the browser now you can see whenever you are going to any invalid url you are getting dear user the page you are looking for does not exist right you can also change the color here by using style attribute style equals to you can specify color and let it be red again you can come back and reload you see that it has been customized so yes, it works for us. But observe one thing that the status code is 200, which is incorrect because status code 200 is for the found URLs. Right, we can fix this. The customized error message is displayed, but we also need to fix the status code. Right, so we need to pass a second parameter, status equals to 404 which is for not found that is invalid urs check it again and now you see that the status 404 is now visible and that is not found but this is now again as discussed it's at the project level you might want that for a specific function or for a specific url it should display any other customized url and not that of the project level because this is going to be uh, now a default message for each and every invalid URL in any of your application of the same project. So let's fix this thing as well. In the previous lecture, you might be remembering that we used a regular expression example of the restaurant where the user was providing the category which was the mandatory parameter and a subcategory that was the optional parameter. So if the user does not enter any subcategory, it would print category not provided. Just like in this example, in this function, you see that if category is not provided, then it would say not provided. That would be great. That's okay. But let's now handle this as a, as a part of the error handling. What we will do, we will be specifying that subcategory not provided and you can also pass a status code, status equals to 404. And also you can put some 
let's say span span tag and we can have span again Span tag and specify the color as red. So that is just a part of the customization, not really required. We are just trying to bring as much customization as possible. Let's specify the color as red. So right now, as you can see, we are having a problem here. We will be using double inverted quotes instead outside. Right. So now let's check the result. We will be going to restaurant and if I write deserts and I put cake, yeah, it's working. But let's not provide cake now. That is the subcategory. So it would say category deserts, subcategory is not provided and the status is 404. So it means that it's very uh, easy for us to customize uh, the messages, the error messages at the application level as well. So right now what we did, we went to the application and uh, we had uh, specified inside the function itself. So that thing will only work for this function. Now the same thing can be implemented for query parameters as well. Now if you remember again that in the previous lectures we visited a path, we defined a path as recipe where the user was required to specify the query parameter. That query parameter was food. So let's visit the function once again. Inside the function, we are considering the input from the user in the form of a food parameter. And if the food is being provided, it will print recipe is available for food. Let's visit this path once again. Let's see what it prints. So I'll be going to recipe and question mark food equals to, let's say right now I'll be writing cake. Recipe is available for cake. But what if I don't specify anything? Let's say I'm simply writing food. So it will not print anything. Let's say even if I don't write food, it would specify recipe is available for none. We need to resolve this. And you can also see that the status code is also 200. So let's try to check that how we can resolve this by using the status codes. So all you have to do is use one condition that if not, if not food means if the food is not provided, food parameter is not provided, then in that case, you will be returning an HTTP response that food parameter is missing. And alongside, you can also mention the status code, put a comma and use status equals to 404. Now that's up to you if you want to print this in some red color or in some other color. But let's check the result. Now if you're not providing anything, food parameter is missing and it's saying 404 status code. So it means that we are successful in implementing all the kinds of error handling. So that's all for this lecture. In the next lecture, we will start with templates in Django.